As a VR enthusiast, it can be really exciting to think of a company like Apple stepping in because they can reshape the whole market. Now at this point, we've been talking about a potential Apple VR headset for years, but it's always been loose. Well, that all changed recently as Apple began to fire up the product launch engine. As we approach Apple entering the VR space, Tim Cook has been out on the campaign trail, trying to drum up some excitement for virtual reality. In a VR-focused interview with GQ, Cook just said, it's the idea that there could be an environment that's even better than the real world. And to overlay a virtual world on top of the real world might be an even better world. So clearly they have intentions that stretch further than just VR and into a possible AR future. We know Apple are almost certain to enter the market this year. The Verge has said that Apple will be announcing the headset on June 5th at WWDC. This was later confirmed by reliable leaker Mark Gurman. Then when Apple went to actually announce the event, the image that they used for the promo pics looks like an array of lenses, very similar to what you might expect in a VR headset. It's very clear that they are going to be talking a lot about virtual reality. We do know that the Apple execs recently got a showcase, so the product is ready for full demonstrations. Though we also heard that mass production might be delayed for a few months because of apparent lack of fervour from the public. That is why Tim is out cooking up some excitement with the press. He wants people to be absolutely drooling for his tech when he announces it. This could be the moment that really makes his legacy as part of Apple. Ming-Chi Kuo said that the full production had been delayed for a couple of months because there was a lack of excitement for something like an iPhone moment. That is no surprise to me. The iPhone was a whole new product segment, not just new to Apple, but new to the entire world. People were excited. Now it won't be the same with this because this is new to Apple, but it's not new to everyone else. We've had VR headsets for years at this point. Unlike the iPhone, this could actually be quite a niche product at launch. Pegatron, Apple's manufacturing partner, says that they actually expect to sell just 1 million units in the first year. Now if you compare that to something like the iPhone, which sells over 200 million units in a year, then you look at a very different outlook. 1 million units would be enough to get it in the hands of a decent amount of developers and some real enthusiasts that will start drumming up some excitement for the general public. At this point we've got a pretty good idea of what the specs will be and what it should be able to deliver and that is going to need to be a lot because the asking price is very, very high. Mark Gurman says we should expect it to be over $3,000 at launch. Now that is a lot. That's more than three times what you'd expect to pay for a Meta Quest Pro now. And general feedback is that the Quest Pro has failed to sell as much as Meta had previously expected because the asking price was just too high. So what can we expect? Well, the Reality Pro, as it's rumoured to be called, will be Apple's VR headset. This won't be the Apple glasses. We're told they still will be coming at some point in the future. This is very specifically a virtual reality headset. According to a report from The Information, it will have a sleek, curved design that will focus on comfort and usability. The design has been described as something similar to the Quest Pro, but with a more premium Apple-esque touch. That indicates it should look good, but won't be anything mind-blowing like an ultra-small form factor design. It's said to be made of aluminium, glass and mesh, taking design cues directly from the Apple Watch Ultra and the AirPods Max. Now an interesting feature Mark Gurman has been telling us about is that there will be a screen on the front of the headset. That screen will be used to display an image of the user's eyes, so anyone who's looking in from the outside can see where you're looking. Now that's not a particularly big feature for the user themselves, and most people I know who use VR on a regular basis tend to use it in a private space with no people around, so there's not usually much of an audience to look in and see that. Although, as a content creator, I am quite excited at the idea of projecting something on there because it could be more engaging for a viewer. And that gives us confirmation that there will be eye tracking. Hopefully that will be used similarly to as on the PSVR 2 and it can enable things like foveated rendering, meaning the system can really get the most from the power within. Now Bloomberg previously reported that the headset would feature bespoke custom silicon, but recent information, again coming from Mark Gurman, has said that now isn't the case the headset will be featuring an M2 processor. That's the same chip that you see in a MacBook Pro and other top tier Apple devices. Now I think that's really exciting. Apple can do some really impressive things with their own chips. I run an iPad Pro and I've got the M1 chip version. There's actually an M2 out now. I can run some really demanding apps on the iPad Pro, things like DaVinci Resolve, a real top tier editing program. And it does it all whilst passively cooling the chips with no fans in a very small form factor device that's got no space for a large heatsink. That's really promising because they'll face the same challenges when they put that chip into a headset and it looks like they've already mastered it. The Reality Pro will feature two Sony OLED displays capable of showing 4K per eye. 
That's similar to what you see on the PSVR 2 and it maybe could face some similar challenges. We know the PSVR 2 does have some visual problems with things like Mora, driven by the OLED pixel arrangement. But actually it looks like Apple might have solved this because they're not just putting in any old OLED screen. Instead they're working with some bespoke Sony micro OLED displays. That's the kind of display that you'll often see put into the viewfinder of a camera or other similar devices. They're made for really small displays. They have much less space between the pixels. They can get really, really bright and they're very power efficient. So that could mean goodbye screen door effect, but we're still able to retain the really good contrast and colors of an OLED screen. But it could also account for the majority of the price. Currently, the largest micro OLED display that Sony manufactures is much smaller than that required by the Reality Pro. It's also only 1080p and it comes in at a cost of $240 per screen. You're going to need two in the Reality Pro. They're gonna to need to be bigger, they're gonna to need to be 4K. These could be some very, very expensive screens. It also shouldn't suffer from the same issues of glare and the sweet spots that we see on displays like the Quest 2 or the PSVR 2. That's because they won't be using Fresnel lenses. Fresnel lenses are the ringed lenses that you see on the Quest 2 or PSVR 2. Fresnels are much cheaper. For a long time they were the industry standard, but I'm really glad to see people progressing towards pancake lenses. The pancake lenses that will be going into the Reality Pro, very similar to that of the Quest Pro, they don't have a sweet spot anywhere on the lens, you get the same clarity at all points across the lens. They're much thinner so you get a smaller form factor headset and it doesn't refract the light in a funny way causing that glare. We can expect around 120 degrees field of view. Now it can be challenging when using pancake lenses to get a very wide field of view, but 120 degrees is still pretty good. It's wider than you get on something like the Quest 2, but it will still kind of give you that scoped view. Ming-Chi Kuo says that there will be eight cameras on the front of the headsets and they will be capable of top quality mixed reality pass-through. Now that's an increase on top of the five that are on the Quest Pro and that already has excellent pass-through. So I think this could be very, very promising. The pass-through itself will be accessed through the turning of a digital crown on the side of the headset, very similar to what you see on the Apple Watch or the AirPods Max. But those eight sensors won't just be used for the pass-through, they also have a lot of hard work to do. And this is where things get a little bit disappointing for me as a gamer at heart, because we now know that the headset won't ship with any controllers. Everything is going to be controlled through a combination of your eyes and hand tracking. If you've tried navigating with your eyes on the PSVR 2, I think it's best demonstrated in Horizon Call of the Mountain, then it can be really, really effective. It's impressive how accurate it is at following your eyes and hand tracking does continue to get better and better over time. So why am I disappointed? Well, as a gamer, I do believe that controllers are still essential for top quality gaming. You really need that repeatable action and the tactile feedback that you get from a real button. I would love to be proved wrong, but I doubt I will be. Maybe they could sell an additional accessory at a later point that would enable you to play with a controller, but again, that would add even more cost to what is already a very expensive headset. It has been confirmed that you won't need an iPhone to use the headset, but it will add to the experience. You can hand over to your iPhone anytime you need to input a text response. Now that's the same feature that you see on Apple TV. I've got Apple TV, I use it all the time, and if I'm honest, I almost never use the handover text option. I just can never be bothered to take out my phone and switch to that. Instead, I tend to rely on the voice input. Though maybe that does mean that they could use this handoff ability to pair the headset with a controller that would be very affordable. The controller could be affordable because it wouldn't need any built-in tracking. If the tracking is that good from the headset, maybe it could just natively track any controller they choose to make. That would mean all you're passing over is the button presses. That could mean for a much cheaper accessory that could have long battery life. It has been confirmed that the headset will track both your facial expressions and your full body movement. Gone will be the days of floating hands and no legs in virtual reality. We will have full body tracking with no external sensors required. You will save an eye ID, which will be an image of your eye taken through the trackers as your biometrics. You can then use that in place of any password to jump into apps really quickly and really easily. That should be much safer and harder to crack than any simple password. Now, in an unusual turn of events, recent leaks have suggested that it will require an external battery pack. That is very odd. They're talking about quite a large battery that you will either wear in your pocket or strap to your waist. Now I don't know why they can't just mount it to the back of the head strap like so many companies are doing at the moment. That works really well and it provides a good counterbalance to any headset on your head. We've had hints to what operating systems should be coming for many years. We've heard mentions of Reality OS in lots of Apple code, but actually it's been confirmed that that now won't be the case. 
So the OS will now be called XR OS and it will look very similar to that of iOS but on a virtual headset. Apple has always been renowned for their operating system's simple usability and this should be no different. It should be very easy to jump into and get a firm grip of what is available. So what features will it have at launch? Well, one of the things that they're talking about hyping at launch will be FaceTime. FaceTime VR will be capable of rendering a photorealistic avatar to represent the user in a one-to-one -one FaceTime conversation. I say one-to-one -one because it'll only feature two people at launch. Anyone else who wants to join the conversation will only be able to be represented by Memoji. So it's clearly quite a demanding task, and if I'm honest, for me this one's a bit of a gimmick. FaceTime is never going to be enough to sell somebody on this headset. Personally, I make video calls all day at work, but we never use FaceTime, and we would certainly never move to using a VR headset like this, much as I would like to. It's just far too clunky to carry around. You need to be able to jump into and out of conversations really quickly and easily. This just isn't going to provide that. Now, I also do video calls quite a lot at home. We actually use Portal on our TV so that we can have conversations with my parents, so they can see me, my wife, and my daughter, and we can see them on our TV, and it's quite a nice way of catching up. Now, could we transition to Reality Pro? Well, again, probably not. We're probably not going to buy multiple devices. As only one person on each side could be represented by an avatar at each point, we're not just going to sit there passing around a headset between us. It's just not ready for what we need. We're also told that video playback should be incredible on this headset and it's a big focus for Apple. Now VR is great for watching content and this could be better than anything that's come before, particularly if they put some real focus into making some top quality content. But even with that support, I would expect the content to be limited at launch. If they're gonna sell just one million devices in that first year, that's not a large amount of people to make some content for. At the moment, gaming accounts for the majority of the VR market and we actually haven't heard of any big leaks of games that are expected to come with the launch. That is a little bit concerning. We do know that Apple are working on a game engine that will be announced at WWDC, but that doesn't leave long for developers to create something really impressive. If you're picking this up on launch day, you might have a very, very limited amount of games you can jump into. If that's anything like when Oculus first started releasing headsets, then it could be years till the market really gets proliferated with some decent quality games. One thing that should be very good on launch is the ability to use this headset with a Mac to work in virtual reality. Those screens could make for some very good multi-monitor displays, and with the really good tracking they've built in, then there could be some really good uses in a meeting situation. I mean, I've spent a lot of time in apps like Horizon Workrooms, and with the hand tracking that's built into just the Quest 2, that's already quite a good experience. This could be far, far better. So, will the headset be a hit? Well, it's quite hard to say. There's been a lot of talk of rifts in the Apple team. The design team pushed back and said that they weren't ready to release the headset yet, but Tim Cook wants it now. Although I do think that FaceTime will be a bit of a gimmick, I think the high quality avatars that they've created will be very useful at launch. It should help them avoid the same kind of ridicule that Meta have got for their low quality avatars, particularly from the press. It really all comes down to how much support the headset's gonna get at launch. I do fear that they might follow in Zuckerberg's footsteps and really push for other uses outside of gaming, when we know that the majority of the market is only really interested in gaming at this point. And with the expected price tag, the experiences are going to need to be incredible. We know that this tech gets dated really quickly. So if you're spending £3,000, then you're going to need to ensure that you get your money's worth in those first few years. Anyway, that's about all we know at this point. So if you've enjoyed this video, or if you at least found it insightful, then do us a favour, press that like button, and I would love to see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.